Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro with yet another video at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, as is always the case Monday through Thursday. So uh, today I'm gonna show you how to do something really cool. Um, right here is my fist, by the way. And this is a video that I recorded with a green screen behind it. I'm actually gonna show you real quickly, um, a little bit after this, um, my spiel here, uh, how I recorded it and such. Um, you get to see myself in a lovely dirty ass tank top. Um, but basically I just recorded my arm doing a one, two, three, four, and we're gonna use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, to kind of create a follow along, um, I guess you could say explainer that goes through points, you know, one, two, three, four, like this. So I'm gonna use my mouse scroll wheel. Actually, let me refresh so we can have the animations too. These animate in as well. Step one, and this is uh, HTML right there. So I'm using my, my mouse scroll wheel to go down and I'm controlling the video playback based on the scroll position. So I have four steps and that's it. And I can go back up and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So let me just show you on the actual monitor too. So if I refresh, um, we have some animation occurring. I'm just gonna drag down step one, step two, step three, and step four. All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoy this one. Today's question is, do you actively game on the PC? And I ask this because I used to be a massive gamer, um, you know, from my early teens all the way into my late 20s. And then for some reason, I don't know, maybe having kids or something, I just lost interest in gaming. And I think a lot of designers, developers, you know, whatever, they're gamers. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be 35 next week. Um, I don't know if it's just a matter of getting older or just game sucking more. I don't know. I'm a huge FPS fan. Are you a gamer? And do you have any games that you think I might be interested in? That might be a bad question, though, because I, I really shouldn't waste any time. Uh, I'm so busy on this damn channel. Anyhow, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And let's get started. Um, basically I imported the footage and then, um, the footage is right here. This layer down here is a, um, just a background, a solid background color. You could make that anything. That's this light blue right here. Um, and then the footage, this is what I, you know, exported from directly from my camera. Uh, and I simply rotated it and kind of got it in, in, in an orientation that I liked. Um, and then I applied, uh, let's see here the uh, an ultra key just to key out the green. So I'm gonna enable that. It worked out pretty nicely. Um, and then I applied a um, these uh, coloring adjustments right here. It just slightly brightened things up. And then I added a drop shadow for the hell of it like that. So all in all, this is what it looks like. And that's it. All right, so the idea is we're gonna sync up some other um, information on the screen based on these, you know, one, two, three, four happening. All right, so then all I did is just export it as an MP4. Um, for safe measure, if you were to use this in production, you would wanna export it in other HTML5 video formats such as WebM. Um, there are plugins that are free for Premiere at least, uh, that will let you export in um, WebM and OGG, I believe, um, Orbis, I think it's called. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, that's it. What I'm going to do, though, is make the, the video here that I'm exporting, that I'm featuring, that, that I'm going to actually use in the HTML, I'm going to make that available here in the description, um, and I'll probably have it in a zip file or something like that with the project, okay? All right, so um, that's how I did that. So now we're at the page or the stage where you know, you have your video, let's get started. How do we actually do this? All right, so I have a brand new empty folder here opened with a Visual Studio Code, free code, free code editor, Jesus Christ, talk uh, from Microsoft. I feel like a broken record because I'm recording four videos weekly and I say the same thing every time, but you know, I have to because there's new people watching this. Um, so I, I understand if I'm a little bit repetitive for those of you who watch frequently. Um, a main.css right here exclamation point hit enter and give us our boilerplate HTML feels like ground groundhog day here I'm going to type in link to link up our main dot H 
or in main.css file rather. All right. Okay, so let's just get all the HTML out of the way first, uh, first and foremost. So um, each, each of the sections of the steps, like the uh, first one says scroll to begin, next one will be step one, two, three, and four. We're going to contain all of those in uh, the section elements. All right, and we'll just have class equals container. Although I don't think I need to add the class, but I did it beforehand anyhow. And then we're going to have a div class of content. So the section class right here, we're gonna make it long. Like we're gonna set a height individually for each one of them so that it syncs up well with, you know, the one, two, three, four going on. Uh, and so, uh, and then the content class in here is just gonna hold our H1. And that's going to scroll to begin. That's going to say rather. And then underneath there, we're gonna have our paragraph element where um, start it, like this okay i don't i don't know you know what that means whatever uh, but the content in here we're going to use um a script called sticky.js and it's going to make this stick uh to the top of the content uh or the section container right here so you'll see how it works really cool i covered it uh last week actually um and so now we can just take this and i'm going to replicate it four more times all right, so this is the one that says to begin, then we have our four down here. Let me hit Control-B to get rid of that sidebar. So two, three, four. All right, and then real quickly, we're just gonna put step one. I'm not gonna bother even changing the uh, the paragraphs right now. That's a, a little bit too much waiting around. And step four. Awesome. Okay, so now we can go beneath this and set up uh, the video section and all that stuff that's required there. So the the video section first we're going to have, and this is going to be referenced in JavaScript, div ID of set height. And by the way, um, I'm, I am never going to take credit for uh, code that I found and used for a tutorial. So with that said. This here, some of you may have seen this. This was kind of popular. It was real. Um, this is what happened was um, Apple did this the same exact technique that I'm doing like three years ago um, on one of their product landing pages or something where it had this scroll effect where it just goes through the video. The exact same thing we're doing here. Um, and this is like a Google version or something like that. Um, what I did for the JavaScript that's coming up and the general setup that's coming up, I found this GitHub and um, I basically use this as a boilerplate. So we're gonna be using this same JavaScript over here essentially to, uh, to, to get the video portion of what we're trying to do. Of course, I extended it with you know, the, the, this content up here, but yeah, um, just wanted to definitely mention that. I'm not gonna take credit for that crap. All right, so um, then, yeah, this div ID of set height, um, this is this will be targeted. You'll see momentarily in JavaScript. So um, next is a video ID, and again, this is coming straight from the pug code over here. This this, this weird HTML stuff. Uh, it doesn't look like normal HTML. You see, it says pug right there. Um, pug used to be known as Jade, and it's an HTML templating engine. It's a different way, way to write HTML, but it, it's, it's just the same general uh, concept. You can see the vi video, the ID equals v0, tab index, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to be using that same stuff right here. All right, so um, uh, the uh, let's see, our tab index equals zero and then auto buffer, and then preload. All right, and then inside of here goes all of our different source elements um, for each source or video source that we have. Uh, think of them kind of like fallbacks, I guess you could say for browsers uh, that don't support it. Um, we're just gonna use one, it's gonna be the MP4 one. Um, again, you would wanna add WebM as well. So each one has its, its own associated codec, um, the file type. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one off screen. Um, and this, you can see the source type is uh, an MP4, the codex. Uh, I grabbed this here from a Google result about HTML5 video players and, and the source types. And then we have a source here called fingers, you know, one, two, three, four. 
um, .mp4 that I've included in the project files for you guys, and that's going to be the one that I'm going to use. All right, and then um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's all it is for the HTML. Now for the JavaScript to get this actually working. All right, so our JavaScript, um, let's work on the video stuff first, and then we'll work on the sticky stuff after that. And that sounds messed up. Um, so var frame, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and just type that. Um, we, we can get this right here because it's all pretty much the same exact thing. So just take all of the JavaScript right here um, from this code pen. I'll try to remember to link it. Um, hopefully I will. And then uh, if not, you can just pause the video and get that URL yourself. It wasn't too bad. And then we're going to paste it right in between the script tags. Now, the one thing that I am going to change about this, oops, is the uh, frame number. Yeah, we're leaving that there as a start, um, the video at frame zero. Um, the playback const, the constant. Um, so the lower numbers means that it'll be a faster playback and the higher numbers will be slower. Um, I decided to use a thousand. So um, you can just experiment with that. Um, and then as you can see, we have our get element by ID set height. This uh, sets the height eventually here um, based on the duration of the video. So the height of this div is what adds the scroll bars, uh, right? So the scroll bar is pretty much dynamic and it's based on the length of the video um, that you've included, all right? So that's just something to think about. Um, so that's basically it right there. Um, let's save this and at this point, Let's go ahead and I'm going to hit control B and I'm going to right click open with live server. All right. And it's not playing because I forgot to put that, that uh, video file in there. So I'm going to open up uh, that my folder here real quickly. Hang with me. All right. And let's see if I get the right one. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to put, it right in the root here. So I'm going to reveal this here. All right, now let's see if that updated. No, it did not. Let me hit uh, properties. I want to make sure I have the right file type here. Yeah, it's an MP4. Now oh, I'm definitely going to have to um, set some uh, CSS first. So I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go back to my main.css file. Um, let's see here. We're going to have a body element and we're going to say background color is that light blue color that I had in the video itself. So it's going to match up the background of the document. So it looks seamless essentially. All right. And then font family is always Montserrat. It's installed um, on my machine. Um, you can get it. It's free. It's a Google web font. And then our V0, video zero, I assume that stands for. We want to make sure that's position fixed so that it doesn't scroll away with the rest of the content. So we fix that. Uh, we're going to say bottom zero because we want to go to the bottom the way my video is set up with my arm and such and also right zero. So it's, 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 it's going to be organized to the bottom right. Um, I could. I was thinking about making it smaller than 100%, so I guess it doesn't even matter um, if you make it 100% where it's structured at, but um, let's see if it's showing up yet. Yeah, there we go. So now it's working and this is blown up. There we go. All right, and we don't see the other content yet because we need to add some CSS. Okay, so now uh, we're going to do this set height thing. And this is again from that code pen. They have a display block on this. It was already working. I'm not sure if exactly that was necessary anyhow. Um, and then our section, we're gonna say Z index one and position relative. Z index will make it sit on top of our content and there it is now. However, you can see it goes away. Don't worry, we're, uh, we're gonna get there. 
All right, so section. Um, next is our content, uh, which is really the same thing. I, at least I thought it was. Let me see here. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, it's its own div. I was thinking that was a container. All right, and then we're going to put in content and position sticky. Bet you probably most people haven't seen that one yet. There's a WebKit vendor prefix sticky. And then width is 100% and top is 333 All right, so let's check that out. Okay, nothing changed yet. It's our content. Make sure my classes are aligned up. Well, one second. We'll keep on going because I, I believe the issue was, is um, yeah, the height of the section hasn't been set yet. Um, so then we're just going to reference uh, real quickly our H1 and our, our paragraph element. Font size 3EM and a background. It's going to be white. Display inline block. What am I doing? It, that, that looked like I was not spelling it right, but I was. I already recorded an, a video earlier today. I'm tired, man. I think it's showing. Border radius is going to be five pixels and margin zero. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. And then simply paragraph, we're just going to say font size 1.5 EM to make it larger. All right, so now let's set the height of each one of these. Now the height of each one of these needs to kind of align with this hand and the fingers. Like when the step one shows up should only be when it's showing up and it, and then so forth, so on and so forth. So the way we're going to do that, you know, because these are all just section um there's five of them, five of these sections. I'm not giving them IDs. We can just use the pseudo class nth of type. So section nth of type one. So the very first one will say a height of 600 pixels. I believe that worked well. Okay. Now we have to keep on doing um, the other four. And the, the way I got to these values, these height values, is simply through trial and error. I mean, um, yeah, there's no way to know this stuff offhand or, or automatically. The next one, I found that a little bit more time elapsed, so I put 1,200. Make sure we put two, three, four, and five, by the way. Um, the third one was also 1,200. Probably could combine these two. Um, and then 1,000. Then I just put 4,000 on this one so it lasts a long time. Hopefully it, it, it's going to work the same way. Um, we'll see though. All right. There, it looks like it's almost working how we want it to. This scroll to begin part in this step one, that that's not correct. Not at all. What is happening here? Um, well, control shift I whenever you're in doubt and you're trying to figure something out. This here, I guess uh, the height is just not enough. Um, let me make sure I add any other rule sets um, in case you know that is one of the factors. And I don't think it is though. Um, so I'm gonna have to adjust this. You know, this looks like it might have to be like 1200, which may mess up my other values by the way. That's actually pretty good right there. Awesome. And now we can, of course, also use some clever um, animation uh, to apply to these when they come into view. So this is something I covered on another uh, sticky tutorial, um, uh, sticky CSS tutorial from last week. So what we can do is go to that anime. I've been using this a lot. I really like it. It's animista.net web-based animator a animation generator. So if we go up here and we choose text and we choose focus in, I use this one. Um, so we come over here and we copy this and then we put it in, uh, we attach it to our, uh, a new class called entered. 
and we'll reference this in JavaScript shortly. All right, we paste it in there, and then we copy the keyframes from that same page. Copy keyframes, paste it. All right, now we save and go back to our index, and we need um, another script called sticky.js. Let me do a quick uh, search for that. All right, sticky.js plugin, here it is. Um, you can find it, you can find, uh, click on the uh, GitHub page, and the sticky.js is somewhere in there to be found. And then, um, I think that's the same one. I hope I hope it's the same one. It might not be. Either way, I'm going to provide the files here anyhow. Um, I'm going to open up in my other uh, project here and just paste that sticky JS, kind of just clumping all the files together. It's not a serious project though, so I, I don't. I'm not really worried too much about that. Um, and then we're going to reference our sticky.js. We're going to include it right up here. All right, and then all we have to do is put just at the top here, we call it by calling enter view, and then we say the selector, it's gonna be section. So when a section, one of these section elements enters the view, then what? All right, well, let's see. When on enter, we have function, and we put an el.class list. We're going to add a class to our section anytime it's entered, and the class that we're going to add is called entered. That's it. All right, so make sure your, your CSS with the new animation and the index are saved. And I uh, will go back here, refresh. We got our custom blur thing going. Awesome. And there we go. Make this a little larger. Refresh to start new. Go back up at the top here. It looks like I'm a little bit off. I think because I had this reset, I have this zoomed up a little bit. Let me reset that. Because if you zoom, it looks like it may be throwing it off. Yeah, they're, it's a, they're a little bit delayed, but not enough for me to really worry. We just have to work on those um, those values a little bit more. Awesome. Anyhow, that is it. And if you, by the way, I didn't mention this, if you want this to be a little bit higher resolution, uh, you can definitely um, increase the quality when you're exporting your video by a little bit. This is actually only, let me look at the, uh, this, the file size of this, Reveal and Explorer. It's a... Uh, it's 870 meg, or not megs, that would be horrible, uh, kilobytes. So it's less than a meg. Um, so yeah, that's the only way you're going to get around that. Um, or instead of making it 100%, you could make the quality look a little bit um, better by making it, by shrinking it in your CSS. For instance, if I go back up to, um, where is it at? Right here. And I change this maybe to 70. Let's see what happens. So now it doesn't look so blurred because we don't have it zoomed up so high. But of course, it does it it would adjust and make you, you know, adjust your design because this is no longer it doesn't look correct because it's so far over there. But either way, that's the, just some thoughts that I had regarding this. Awesome stuff. All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, like I said, today's question is, are you a gamer and are there any games that you actively play that perhaps you want to recommend to my subscribers and even myself, although I should not game. All right, so I'll see you guys possibly. I'm planning on it. I know typically I do a Monday through Thursday schedule. Tomorrow's Friday. Last Friday, I actually did do a live stream at 10.30 a.m. where I did a review of all of your guys' uh, questions throughout the those previous four days and I also did a live portfolio review so that's something I may do again tomorrow as well but I can't promise it um, t tonight is actually technically July 4th and there's fireworks I'm gonna be drinking alcohol so we'll see how I feel tomorrow all right I'll see you guys soon.